White, also known as Perfect Legend, and I'm from Toledo, Ohio. I've been to the season one and season two finals. The first time I was able to place top four and was able to get a piece of the money. The second time I ended up getting seventh. I was really happy with that, especially because I didn't place in the money. I want to prove that I can win or at least place top three this time. Wow, hovering. Oh, conversion by Carl. Beautiful work. Kung Lao is my main character, but he sucks. So I've been using Scorpion, and Scorpion's been a lot better for me. Everyone, for some reason, likes to cheer me on when I play Scorpion other than Kung Lao. I don't really get that. Scorpion definitely fits my, like, tool set. Oh, really? Here we go. Perfect legend. As Scorpion, it's a totally different ballgame. Oh! Wow! I think Madden is very mad. He needs to find his zen. Play similar style to me, where it's, like, very fundamental, like, really maximizes his character. In season one, I had to beat him to place the money, so I know it's not going to be easy because we went down to the wire last time. This term is really important. It was 75K on the line for first place, 200K overall. I had a really rough road getting here, but I was able to show up to Conway Breaker and, and win the qualifier spot. Honestly, I'm just looking forward to having fun and playing my best. So here we go. This could be Madden versus Perfect Legend. These are, like you said before, these are two fan favorites, and obviously we've got our cosplayers in the crowd. We've got, we've got Sub Zero, Katana. I think I recognize Cassie. that Katana. I don't know. I might do. Really? Why is that? I, I don't even know. However, we have our next game, which, as I said, it, these guys uh, both are a very heavy fan favorites, especially PND Madsen. He's just, he is, I mean, without a doubt, one of, if not, the hypest player, especially internationally. I, I would agree absolutely. I mean, really just, he's a passionate player. He really plays from the heart, but he has fundamentals alongside that. So he knows what he should and shouldn't be doing, but he doesn't necessarily let that stop him from doing just something completely crazy and out of the blue, which is why we saw so many Blood God comebacks. We saw so many uh, just, just general Sub-Zero risky plays in the Pro League, but Perfect Legend himself, uh, he's, he's made the change to, to Ninjutsu Scorpion. He said himself, he thinks it really fits his gameplay more than he did Kung Lao before. So I'm not really sure what this is going to be. I, I predict it's going to be Ninjutsu Scorpion versus, I mean, I would say Grandmaster, but I don't know. That is his best character. I know it is. I can go straight into Revenant Sub Zero. Who will win Scorpion or Sub Zero? Oh no, three seasons in and we're still asking that. Look, Scorpion. this is a tried and tested matchup. Scorpion. Now, Ninjutsu versus Grandmaster, it's a bit of a strange also, matchup. Injustice Scorpion, shout outs to that. Shout outs to Injustice 2. Of and that's course. no doubt why uh, Carl is using that costume. Oh, he's been talking about it a lot. He has weekend. indeed. He has indeed. Now, this matchup is quite an interesting one in that uh, although Grandmaster is a very dangerous character, uh, not only have you got sort of like on a good read to teleport to go behind the clone and punish Sub-Zero, but uh, the actual, the normals that Ninjutsu gains access to, the forward two and the back two, where certain strings uh, into clone that Grandmaster goes for, Ninjutsu punishes those with the forward two. Yeah, uh, but I mean, at the same time, because they can be punished, I predict we're not going to see them used, you know, like, just because they can be punished is, is the reason he's not going to go for them, because why give yourself that free damage away? But the question is, what can he safely do aside from clone to get some pressure? Going? Well, Madden has a very interesting style of Sub-Zero where, because you're built around the corner as that variation, he will aggressively bully you into that corner just to make sure he can establish what he wants to do. It's almost like we saw with Cutthroat, just a corner carry, and Sub-Zero is the king of that as well. Death is more honor than you deserve. Shout out to C in the intros as well. I just, I had to. They had to do it. Arnie goes over the down four. The jump kick on anticipation of the down four. A very sort of common thing to do against Sub Zero. And I like how uh, Madden will put the clone up and then walk in front of his clone to throw an ice ball. If Perfect Legend was to teleport that, he would hit the clone and get punished. Oh, there's a teleport cancel though to keep himself uh, safer at least. Oh, which the forward two? Oh, gets hit by the low. I mean, let's not forget you've got the mix-up of, you've got the low back four, you've got the overhead section of the forward two. Then Jitsu with some pretty dangerous mix-up potential. Oh, nice punish on the back four. That must be why we saw him going to it. Tries to anti cross up sub zero, he's gonna pay for it. And this is gonna be a full combo. Perfect Legend is gonna go for a breaker. Oh no, the risky slide. Do not think that was a good idea at all. But that's gonna be a full combo. And because he was punished after a break. Oh, hang on a minute. Wait, wait, what is going on? Uh, and fortunately, could have been a complete full combo into the round, but Madden with a standing one. Oh, wow, the good read, the meter burn clone, something we see Madden do so often now. Hard knockdown, clone on the screen. Oh, jump kick straight into it. Is that going to be the round? Is that going to be enough? Yes, it is indeed. Round one goes to PND Madden. But that's the danger. I mean, Scorpion's quite hard to lock down because of the teleport. But again, if he's just sitting there not pressing anything, then teleport's not as obvious, uh, well, not as attractive of an option. Oh, no, waste the bar and gets thrown into the clone again. That really sucks. When you're going to spend a bar and then get punished immediately, uh, that's not a great look because, I mean, look, look at what's going on. He's got no bar. How are you going to get out of this corner pressure? You can't even use the environment interaction. You've got nothing to use it with. Oh, oh no. no. Overhead. Refreeze. Oh, Madden with a token refreeze. Big corner damage. Hard knockdown clone once again. 
Oh, and that's just not gonna work. Madden's gonna convincingly take game number one. You Flawless can... victory as well, oh my word. You can respect the attempt, but I mean, if you're gonna be a Grandmaster player, you're gonna be used to fighting characters that have that mobility to deal with clone. I mean, that's armor. You're gonna use a normal to occupy the armor of the teleport, and as you're recovering from that, teleport appears and you hit a clone and die. But it's crazy how how all that, like, that, that kind of just a destruction sequence can start from something so little, like throwing a single bar away. It is literally what, what started that. That is the, the, it, the only thing that made that happen. Perfect Legend is gonna go straight back to the original. I mean, this was the original character. Perfect season Legend one used. says hello. Wait a minute, this is a complete run back from season one. Grandmaster sub? No, he is gonna go for display. Lisa Raiden. I mean, again, I agree with it. The benefit right here is that all three of Perfect Legend's characters uh, have ways around the way Grandmaster has to be played. I mean, Displacer can just, I mean, look, the, the, the clues at the top, I mean, you can Displace. It's just moving around all over the place, going behind Clone, going behind any kind of setup a character's gonna do. Uh, and Scorpion with the teleport, Buzzsaw with the full screen hat, so just constantly eliminate the clone from far away. I, I actually feel like this the, this style of play really really does suit Perfect Legend because the, the loser match and swap character, there is no rust when he's going from character to character. Perfect Legend has played multiple characters in multiple fighting games for many, many years. He doesn't have that issue of swapping them. And if his opponent's not as good at adapting to his new character as he is at just playing them, then that's going to work out in his favor. Now, I think one thing we do see, though, um, with Perfect Legend is uh, this, this style of changing character after each loss um, can work, and sometimes it costly does not work. Uh, sometimes I think he picks... I think it depends on the matchup. It depends on who you're I against. feel like sometimes maybe he picks too many characters. Um, we've seen him use some characters. He, he doesn't seem to play as much as others, uh, and it can almost kind of seem like he's giving up a free win. We saw him do it with Johnny Cage at Combo Breaker, uh, where he just doesn't seem as comfortable. But he's sticking with his face there. First, it goes to Madden. Doesn't press the one to Wake up teleport. Does actually get punished, I think. Not quite sure what happened there. It was kind of when I used to meet Selectric, I kind of missed it due to the particles. I mean, that's going to be one of the benefits of Displacer. I mean, the, the strength of this variation is that it's very hard to actually keep this variation specifically in the corner. And being in the corner is where Grandmaster wants to be. Oh, no, unfortunately. No, that's good for PL, though. Well, I don't think Madsen was expecting that Ice Ball to connect at all, so he'd already gone in for a second one. And by the time the team would get hit, it was too late. The second Ice Ball was already coming out. Oh, there's the NJP. Nice confirm for Purple Legend. Cor again, corner carry of his own. Both players sitting on a lot of meter. There's going to be a very sort of... I mean, this is going to be an interesting neutral. Pushes him into the corner. Oh, where's the NJP? Gets out. Oh, the patience! The oh, patience the respect from, them. from both players! What was that? Sneaky stuff. Purple Engine just proving himself. Cannot be touched right now. Oh, with the full overhead, that's going to be a full punish and a corner repositioning, and he spent so much bar to make all that happen. That is one of the, the issues with Displacer, is that it's so resource heavy. Gets the low, but doesn't quite connect it. I think he was too close, so the Shatter isn't going to combo. You have to be slightly further away to get the second hit of the Shatter. Oh wow! I'm, 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 I'm struggling to keep up with this placer. It's I, well, you can't really see what happens until it's happened. This is an interesting character, well, especially when he appears on or right next to a clone, and he is going to accidentally touch that. That's going to be the bane of trying to play an aggressive character against Grandmaster, which, I mean, he's going to stop you dead in your tracks. And that's going to be another refreeze. PL breaking late on. I mean, normally that would have been a bad idea, but he doesn't want to take the hard knockdown into clone. Well, that's it. Like normally, people say, "Don't break at the end of a combo." But in that situation, when the end of the combo is hard knocked down into another guest, like just get out of there. Wonderful break. Oh, and you can tell. I mean, Pio's making himself extremely slippery and very hard to hit. Oh, oh no! Hey, that was a nice reaction. That right there, Madden knew that PL was going to go for that meatless teleport, and the one-one punish just keeps ready. There's the punch break. Armor breaking. PND Madden is now two games up on Perfect Legend. Wow, just like that. I mean, this this is this is. How <laughs> we go to the sub zero in the corner? I don't oh mean yeah. About it. <laughs> I love this guy. He was here for season two as well. He was looking awesome as always. I, now I, I remember originally seeing the picture of his costume go viral like literally a year ago. I never thought I'd actually get to meet him, and here we are. It's quite an honor. Quite an honor. That now, kid, man. now, once again, following suit in the, the style that Perfect Legend likes to adopt is every time he loses, he switches character so that his opponent now has to kind of adjust on the fly to this new pick. Now, he has locked into Bustle, which means that Madsen has got to lock into Grandmaster, taking some time out, thinking about this. Let's not forget, Madsen uh, has lost early for the past two seasons. Well, I, I, I actually think this, this works out to PL's benefit, right? Because MKX's game, multiple variations with, with every character, does promote the idea of playing more than just one specific thing. Whether it's a single variation, a single character, if you can swap and change, that's kind of what the game is, you know, 
aimed to, to do. That's why it gives you this a massive option. Like, And players like Perfect Angel make the most of it. But then, whereas people like Madsen will just get really, really comfortable with one character, there are those that enjoy playing multiple ones. So it's kind of, it's, it's an up and down, double-edged sword kind of thing. But here we go, Buzzsaw, Season 1 against Grandmaster, Season 3. Here we go. We, did, we saw this exact matchup in Season 1. Perfect Legend did take it against Madsen back in the day. It was Kung Lao versus Sub-Zero. We see the exact same matchup right now. Now, Perfect Legend is extremely slippery, especially when he's in Buzzsaw. Very unpredictable. What? Wait, 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 what was that? How did he run over the hat? What's going on? He ran very fast through space itself, so the Buzzsaw just didn't count. I'm going to slow that down when this tournament's finished and play it in slow motion. I think he ran over the hitbox. That's what I think happened. Old Laser's Teleport is going to get punished. But only punished by standing ones, though. Not too bad. Again, though, that's that's one of the benefits. Buzzsaw is going to sort of uh, comfortably deal with the kind of uh, the full screen corner game. Uh, sorry, the full screen uh, clone game. Because, I mean, it's just going to shut the clone down. I mean, it will just collide with it and just get rid of it immediately. Try oh, running past it again. It again. Oh, there's the dive kick. I'm now, not thing is, sure if that risk was worth it. Though. Does, he's going to build a breaker. No, he leaves him standing. There's Madsen. Makes him lose more health before he builds the breaker. And wow, ready for Oh, no, he no. goes for Meteor Bird Clone. I'm pretty sure he meant to go for Ice Ball, but just... Oh, wait a minute. Not enough. Alive. Not enough. Wait. If, that was in, if this was Injustice, that'd be a sick mix-up. Oh, look, I'm, I'm getting really... I'm getting really confused. There's so much going on, it's hard to keep up with. My word. Oh, there's the low, uh, low hat through the clone. Oh, oh, patience. It's patient because he's waiting for a meter burn spin counter poke. That, that season one mix up. Nice anti cross up from uh, Madsen. Just going to opt to take the damage. Oh no, gets frozen. Has to break that. You do not want that corner carry. Oh, boy, he, no, that, that's it. He gets touched once. He's in the corner. Nice preemptive teleport from Perfect Legend. That's the Perfect Legend we know. What, just completely explosive, unpredictable, hard to read. That's, that's what he plays for, and that's what he's doing! There's a nice confirmation of the dive to cancel the corner positioning himself. The question is, does he keep the positioning, or does he take this fight mid-screen again? It's a bit dangerous trying to establish all oh, the pressure against this? Grandmaster for this exact reason! <gasps> Could this be it? Could this be it? Oh! Oh, the audience goes wild for the uppercut! Is he gonna bet it on a spin? That's Perfect Legend goes in for the oh spin! That's it! 3-0! Against Perfect Legend, he does beat! his Season 1 Demon and move on in the winner's bracket. What a crazy set. I feel like that, that last round was amazing. It was perfect from, uh, from Perfect Legend. It was great for Madsen. Just wonderful reactions, predictions, reads, and it came down so close. But just like that, Madsen is your first international to move on in the winner's bracket. Perfect Legend still in this. He is no stranger to the loser's bracket. He has been there multiple times and has won tournaments from there before. So he still is very much in it. But Madsen, what a showing. Um, but the thing is, we actually just said right at the end, do you risk establishing a not a strong corner game against a character like Sub-Zero who one touch puts you in that situation? And that's exactly what happened. That was just, just wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. I mean, it was kind of... That, that really was Purple Legends' three characters, really. That, 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 they were his characters, and, and this is why. But Madsen, just this, this strong Grandmaster player since day one, just tremendous stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm glad Madsen was finally able to be... I mean, just look at this crazy stuff he was able to pull out. Uh, really, really uh, good to see. Man I mean, imagine that does mean he's gonna actually fight against Dragon, which is a matchup I think we're all extremely excited to see <laughs> right there. I think Madden actually had a little bit of a bro moment with that Sub Zero after the set as well. Now, this does this does mean that we have our, our first set of higher end matches. Yeah, the top four are finished. So, a, a nice deck so far. So, Scar versus Hayate, and now Madden versus Dragon. I believe they've all fought before. Also, we see an Unruly in the crowd as well. I'll be chatting to him later on. But here we go. I mean, nice, a nice start. Four games through already, just like that. This is, this is pretty fast. This is quite a quick game. It is indeed. So, we're going to throw back over to Mr. Joshua Gray and Brian Compton. Thank you, gentlemen. What a day so far, looking at these matches. Some surprises, but especially the performance of Yupei with that cutthroat cane. A lot of people really cheering to see Alien go down, but it wasn't the case. Yeah, I was rooting for him for sure. In a couple, a couple of moments, he looked like he was going to be able to pull it off. Of course, uh, we saw Scar doing Scar things. Uh, Madsen right now looks spectacular, super strong. So. And the best cheerleader you could ask for. We have... <laughs> Sub-Zero standing by to cheer him on Literally, in the corner. Yeah. Best manager ever. Uh, we're just getting started, folks. So that was the first four matches. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. But before, before we do, though, let's check in with our correspondents who are giving us a behind-the-scenes look at what's happening at the event. Brad and Jennifer, are you guys standing by? Yes, we are. Thank you, Joshua. The atmosphere and energy in this room is so intense. Right, guys? It's amazing. Yes! But don't 
worry, we haven't forgotten about you guys at home, so make sure you tweet your most intense game face to at ESL Mortal Kombat using the hashtag test your luck and we'll be picking 10 people throughout the day for awesome MKX prize packs. Brad, tell them what they're going to win. Uh, thanks, Jen. Prizes include an MK comic book, an Injustice 2 t-shirt, an exclusive Season 3 Finals t-shirt, a Scorpion statue, a LexCorp phone charger, and an MK XL PS4. That sounds awesome. I want all of those yeah. things. So if you guys want to win those prizes, you got to send out your tweets. And don't forget to follow both of us on Twitter and Snapchat. And later on during the broadcast, we'll be reading some of your tweets. Joshua, back to you. All right, thanks, Jennifer and Brad. Brian, we also have a lot of prizes in store for the people that are here at the event. And also, if you take a picture using the hashtag MKXProLeague, we'll print off the pictures here. The booth is just around the corner over at the lounge. And also, we'll be giving out some scorpion statues for some of those pictures that are taken here at the event. A lot of prizes in store for all of our fans today. Yeah, absolutely, some, some amazing stuff. I'm a little jealous myself, because I gotta work, so. <laughs> Me too, we're gonna take a quick break. We come back, the MKX Finals Pro League continue after this.